Do you have or suspect that you have both Candida and SIBO? In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to navigate treatment so you can get the best results in this situation, so stay tuned. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. My name's Amanda Malachewski. I'm a certified functional nutrition health coach and a digestive and allergy detective. For weekly videos on how to find your personal diet and supplement plan for IBS and SIBO, please consider subscribing and be sure to hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. And just a super brief heads up that I do work with clients who have IBS and SIBO symptoms. So if that's something that you need help with, please check out the description box down below this video and click on the link to schedule what's called a discovery call. So candida overgrowth in the small or large intestine often co-occurs with SIBO, also called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, as well as with IBS. And as a gut health coach who helps people navigate their treatment protocols and diets and supplement protocols for their IBS symptoms, I find that a percentage of my clients need to address both SIBO and candida or fungal overgrowth to get well. However, it's important to approach this situation with the right strategy so that you get the results that you're looking for rather than wasting a bunch of time or money. So in this video, I'm gonna share some key strategies for when you have both candida and SIBO so that you can get the best results. So let's get started. So candida is a yeast that is a normal part of your digestive system microbiome, but in some situations it can overgrow and cause some symptoms. One of the most common situations where this happens that you might already be familiar with is when you take a course of antibiotics for any kind of infection. This can lead to an overabundance of candida in your system, which can lead to vaginal yeast infections or bloating or diarrhea or other kinds of symptoms. Candida overgrowth can also be a problem with diets that are high in sugar, refined carbohydrates, or alcohol, when you're exposed to environmental mold, or sometimes in the presence of other kinds of gut infections like SIBO or bacterial dysbiosis in your large intestine or parasites. But even given this, it's important to recognize and understand that candida is a normal part of your gut microbiome. And so if you have a candida overgrowth, the, uh, you know, the solution that we're aiming for isn't to eradicate candida, it's to bring it back under control and into balance with the rest of your gut microbiome. Another fun fact about fungal overgrowth in the intestines is that typically it occurs in the large intestine but it can also occur in the small intestine. And this is called small intestinal fungal overgrowth or SIFO. So a lot of you have asked me to talk about this connection between candida and IBS and SIBO. So generally I suspect that the presence of SIBO or other kinds of infections that can be driving IBS symptoms can destabilize the gut environment and lead to candida overgrowth. And I especially suspect that fungal overgrowth is one of the things that's going on when people treat for SIBO test negative for SIBO, but still have bloating and other kinds of digestive symptoms. So how should we deal with candida and SIBO together as one ecosystem? So obviously the first thing to get clear on is to know exactly which types of infections that you specifically have. And this of course means that you are going to run some kind of SIBO breath testing and maybe some stool testing to check for candida overgrowth if you haven't done this part already. Now I know a lot of people think that they have candida out there based on maybe symptom questionnaires or symptom lists, but ultimately when it comes down to deciding what kinds of treatment you're going to put into your body, I feel like it's really important to have a clear picture of exactly what you're dealing with. If you think that you have an infection and you treat it with that assumption, but you don't actually have that infection, you're wasting your time and money and maybe exposing yourself to treatments that really could do more harm than good. So for SIBO, you want to use some kind of SIBO breath test. The optimal test is the new Trio Smart test that tests for all three types of gases. But even if you can only access a test that just looks for hydrogen and methane, that's fine, that's gonna give you a lot of great information. I do have a whole video where I do a demo of running a SIBA breath test and I will leave a link for that below this video. Testing for candida is a little trickier because it doesn't culture really well. And for this reason, I like relying on the GI map stool test because it uses DNA analysis to look for fragments of that organism. And so I feel like it's pretty adept at picking up candida if it's there. You can also use other functional medicine stool tests like the Genova GIFX test or the doctor's data tests. You will need a practitioner to order these tests. They're not available directly to the public, but they are other options if you have a doctor or naturopath to work with. I do have a video where I show you what's included in the GI map and what those test results look like. So I will also leave a link for that video below this video. Another way to look for candida is to run what's called an organic acids test. This is sometimes called an oats test. Um, and this test looks for the kind of metabolic byproduct and waste of candida in the body. 
Because it's an indirect marker, I don't like relying on this as much, but if you have that test and you have indicators there that there is yeast on your oats test, this might be uh, another piece of data that you can work with. And by the way, I do offer the GI map test and SIBO testing inside my Calm Digestion Method program. So if that's something you're needing help accessing, go ahead and reach out. Unfortunately, there's no test for small intestinal fungal overgrowth, again, CFO. So evaluating this is a squishy combination of how you've responded to treatments previously, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and your symptoms. And that's unfortunately the best that we can do there. Certainly, let's hope that in the future some testing emerges so that we can evaluate this a little more easily. All right, so you've tested for candida and SIBO, now what? Well, as I discuss in my Roadmap to Gut Recovery, which you can grab in a link down below this video, um, it's really crucially important that before you dive into dealing with infections of any sort, that you have, to the best of your ability, minimized your symptoms with diet changes and optimized your digestion as best you can. You don't have to spend a ton of time here, but everything that you invest before uh, dealing with infections pays dividends in the effectiveness of those protocols. And at the very least, this means eating a low sugar diet because bacteria and yeasts love to thrive on sugar. And I know sometimes it's a little hard to hear this advice about dealing with diet first, but my experience has really borne this out that people who focus here and deal with this part first really see better results in the long run. Once you've addressed your diet and your basic digestive function and shored that up, now you're ready to tackle these infections. Now, if you've turned up positive for both SIBO and Candida, you will want to address the bacteria first. This is the standard order of operations that naturopaths have used for decades, and it's partly because of the way that those different organisms destabilize the gut environment. So I've detailed SIBO treatment in an earlier video, and again, I'll leave a link for that video below this uh, video for you to check out after finishing up here. But the really key important thing to know in this context is that treating SIBO successfully can require multiple rounds of treatment, and it's important to take it all the way to SIBO negative before you move on to dealing with the fungus. Do you have SIBO and Candida already? If so, type yes in the comments or leave me a lengthier comment to tell me all about it. All right, once you've dealt with your SIBO, how do you deal with the candida? Well, besides a low sugar diet, there are three primary ways that you can address a candida infection. The number one option is probiotics. Probiotics in many situations can re-regulate and rebalance your gut microbiome. And this really should be like a primary first line trial for you, no matter what's going on with your gut microbiome. And sometimes this approach can even help you resolve the problem without drugs or other botanicals. One of the best probiotics to help control candida overgrowth is a beneficial yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. But the strategy to restore the gut microbiome is a little bit bigger than this. Like ultimately we want to be restoring a diversity of probiotics in the gut just to give them a chance to do their work on their own. Ideally, you would try to include one high quality probiotic from each of the three main categories of probiotics. I've made a whole video about this topic. So if that's something you need help with, be sure to check the link below this video to get a hold of that video. The second option is to use herbal or supplemental antifungal agents. And these primarily include uva ursi tincture, grapefruit seed extract, and caprylic acid. Typically, these are used in kind of a 30-day course, and then you reevaluate how you're doing at the end of those 30 days. The third option is to talk with your doctor or naturopath about using prescription antifungal medications like nystatin or fluconazole. Um, according to my naturopath, the nystatin is primarily used to address GI-based uh, fungal overgrowth, while something like fluconazole is more for systematic wide candida. In any event, you would discuss these options with your doctor. Um, a couple of months ago, Dr. Ruscio mentioned in a podcast that he had run across a study where antifungal medication was deemed to work best when it was used in a pattern of one day on, two days off for 60 days. So I will leave a link to that podcast below this video as well if you wanna check that out. That was a really interesting study that he highlighted. Once you've gotten through both your SIBO and Candida protocols, you'll wanna maintain your success by continuing to eat a diet that minimizes your symptoms and continue to incorporate digestive function supports like probiotics, stress relief practices, and good eating habits. Certainly navigating these kinds of infections is possible as long as you use an appropriate strategy to guide your thinking about it. 
I've tried to highlight the most important details here so that you have a basic roadmap to approach SIBO and Candida with, but of course there's always more details to the problem. And this is exactly what I specialize in teaching my clients. So if you need help figuring out how to adapt the various diet and supplement protocols that you're using to try and improve your gut health, I wanna encourage you to download a free copy of my Roadmap to Gut Recovery, which shares the exact strategies that I teach my clients to help them find their personalized plan for calm digestion. You can grab your free copy at confluencenutrition.com forward slash roadmap. I'm putting that on the screen here and I will also leave a link for that below this video. All right, let me know if this video was helpful by clicking like or leaving me a comment and even maybe passing it on to somebody else who you know could use this video. And then go ahead and watch this video about SIBO treatment basics next. I think that would be really helpful for you. Hope you're having an awesome day and we'll talk soon.